Next to me in these two boxes are what I hope to be an incredibly enticing, budget-friendly combo for you. Inside is the Anycubic Photon Zero, and next to it, the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station, a $299 budget value for resin printing and finishing. And if this performs like I hope it does, it's gonna change the game. And speaking of games, Hadouken! Oh, and just like that, the uh, Photon Zero and the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station are out of the box. Who knew that playing video games as a child would come in so handy? Well, let's dive right into this, right here, on 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, welcome back. Uh, before we dive in, let's go over the statistics real quick. And I took a picture on, <laughs> on my phone, so I didn't get anything wrong. It is MSLA, 405 nanometer wavelength. The XY resolution is super tiny, but uh, it's a 480p screen. Uh, the screen that it's using is actually smaller than my iPhone XS Max. It's most likely similar to like an iPhone 5SE or, uh, or an equivalent Android device. Uh, layer resolution 0.01 to 0.2. Printing speed 30 millimeters per hour. Uh, it takes 405 nanometer resin, which is most of these MSLA machines around this time. Printing volume is uh, 97 millimeters by 54 millimeters by 150 millimeters tall. It's not the largest print area, but it seems like if this does exactly what it's supposed to do, this is an incredibly budget-friendly budget -friendly first resin machine for many out there. Well, now that we got that out of the way, it came with this. This is a... Uh, first start, assembly instructions. It tells us what we need to do. It came with this. That's for getting wax out of your ears. This is a USB, uh, USB drive of undetermined size. There's your pancake flipper. And this is a resin safety package. You've got some gloves, uh, some Allen keys, uh, all that sort of stuff. Here is the build platform for the Anycubic Photon Zero. And uh, it's about that big. And this is the resin tank right here. Ooh, this is this is kind of nice here. Zoom in there. It actually shows how much resin is in the tank, and it gives you a max line, and it's on both sides. That's super handy. Okay, great, great design decision, Anycubic. Honestly, according to the assembly instructions, the first thing you need to do is level the build plate. So this involves plugging in the unit, turning it on, raising Z 10 millimeters, loosening the screws, putting that on, bringing it down onto a piece of paper, pushing down with your fingers and then tightening. That's all it involves. So it looks like the print is gonna be on this USB stick. What we need to do is grab some of the resin and we shake it up. Shake, 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 Sinora. You should shake your resin enough to where your Apple Watch thinks it's exercise, honestly. All right, safety is important, obviously, and uh, I think it's important to remember that you're playing with something that could cause sensitivity in your system the more you touch it. <sighs> I guess if I breathe too much, my glasses fog up. Uh, but just always remember, when you're using a resin-based 3D printer, you need to take safety in into, into consideration, which means nitrile gloves, masks, or something to guard against getting resin into your mouth or nose. Um, and also a well-ventilated area. We have windows here we can open up and so we can get the ventilation, plus we've got a filtration system we can put next to it. There we go. It is, it is blue! Uh, I, do, I do detect an odor from this resin and you will detect an odor from... <laughs> I can't stop breathing it. You will detect an odor uh, from most any resin that you use, just know that uh, you don't want to breathe that all day. The resin is in, the USB stick is in my hand. Let's put that in and let's get that test print going. Ooh, it's descending into the resin. According to the information on the front, this default file that we're using to test with the, the first printing with is 1,303 layers and it will take four hours and 20 minutes to complete. I'm not gonna stand here and stare at it for four hours and 20 minutes, don't worry. I'm gonna go get some other stuff done, but we'll see you back once this is done. And then if this printed successfully, we've got a couple other prints that we're gonna try. See you in a bit. Day two. We're back, it's the next day, and we can tell that the print is finished. And you know, looking at it, it looks really good. It looks like it's appropriately good, like it's supposed to look this way. Thank you, thank you, that is fantastic. 
You can see at the bottom there's a little drip, and uh, I don't think that's solidified resin, that's just a drip. But here, I'm gonna take this off. We can see that it is using the, the blue resin. Uh, I am getting a resin odor, and this resin odor was not present at all when the cover was on. And I thought that was interesting because this cover doesn't have any sort of gasket to seal it in. It's making good contact or there's some sort of circulation that's keeping the odor from getting out. I don't know, but uh, I'm going to put this back on because I don't want to huff resin. Now, though, we have a resin model and it's, it's done printing. But what we need to do is get this... We're gonna get this going. This is the wash and cure station. So this is a container that you fill with isopropyl alcohol and you take the build plate and the model, dip it inside, it swirls it around, then it's washed, and then you remove it, put it on a spinning turntable, it activates the UV lights and then it cures it. So uh, let's just get into it. I'll slide it over here. So this is the wash and cure station. So it's got the amber shield. Uh, and that's because this does have UV lights in it. Uh, this just comes right out. Wow, it's got some weight to it. This is good. So it's got a little motor right here and there's a platform that goes on it. So it'll spin the model as it is curing it. But this also, I believe, has a magnet in it which attaches or magnetize, holds on to whatever. <laughs> there's, a, there's a spinner that goes in here and this thing on the outside spins. And so when you put it there, the magnet holds onto it and it spins it. And I know there's a proper term for it. And if you know it, let me know in the comments. Inside we have styrofoam. Bye. And look at that. And it's a little basket. Oh, and inside, here we go. There it is. So this, uh, it's got some magnets on the other side and those will interface with the magnets over there and it'll be able to spin without having a hole through the container essentially. This container holds a max of 3,500 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. And this, this right here, this is fantastic. And I hope more manufacturers are able to do this. This is a lid with a gasket and clamps, which means that your isopropyl alcohol can exist in a sealed container ready for use. You don't have to empty it out or pour it out into something. You don't have to put tape or cover it. It won't evaporate out. It's covered and sealed. That is fantastic. It's a tight seal. It's a really good seal. Ah, so there's the platform. Uh, it's just a piece of acrylic and it's covered in the, uh, in the, brown, the brown covering, the brown paper. So this is how this mechanism works, I believe. This can slide right there. And imagine the bucket in there, first of all. I just wanna make sure. So this would sit there. Uh, this can hang out here, and then um, this will spin in the bucket, circulating the isopropyl alcohol. Or what they allow is the build plate itself being attached via this. And then you have a height adjustment. So if you have a short model or you have a tall model, you have a way of putting it in the bucket and uh, not having to fill this with isopropyl alcohol the entire way if you don't have to. I think we're ready. So I'm going to get on my gloves and we're going to do this. This is the Wham Bam Slap Mat. It's a silicone mat made for people who like to do a lot of resin 3D printing. Silicone is great because whatever you get on it, you can just sit out in the sun if you have sun. We don't have that in here in Seattle, but then it'll cure it. And then once cured, re re once resin is cured, I can't talk with this on. It's just, I'm sorry. Once resin is cured, then it becomes acceptable to throw in the trash. So, you know, the little resin bits. Thanks again for Wham Bam for sending that over. I think first steps are to fill this with isopropyl alcohol. Okay, it's gonna need more than that. That's gonna need more than that. It's yeah. gonna need more than that, yeah. Well, that's splashing, isn't it? There we go. There's kind of a little uh, a little detent, an outline here that you can set this in so it stays in place. I'm gonna wash this uh, on the build plate. So then I will use this to then lower the build plate down into the ice profile alcohol. What I like about this model as a resin print is there are minimal amounts of, of points of contact. And so from this flat section here, it's building up and creating this, this wonderful thing. So if I do this right, does it? It's supposed to hook on. Okay, hold on. You know, it pays uh, to read the directions and I was wrong. So what I was looking at here was a different build plate. You can see that the top of the build plate is angled just a bit and there is a red knob 
and that's a different build plate than what's on this one. I think that's for another Anycubic resin-based machine. So what we can do is slide this on just like that, and then once it's in the isopropyl alcohol, I think it's gonna be heavy enough to not fall off. Again, we also have that basket, and so we can take this off of the build plate, put it in the basket, and cure it, but I think this should work. So let's give it a try. That's on there pretty good, you know, all things considered. I can already see all the excess stuff from coming off it. Can you really? Oh yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. Oh, it's on. It's on. It defaults to cure. I need to hit that to change it to wash. And then I've got start, stop, and time, and I'm gonna wash it for six minutes. Look at that. Wow, that's spinning quite quick. This does have a rubber gasket, and I'm not getting any isopropyl alcohol odors, which is fantastic as well. And it looks like that's staying on, so we won't have to use the basket, at least for this one. I'm gonna call this good. I guess uh, we'll see you in five and a half minutes. Eventually. And a beep, and a beep, and a beep. Three beeps, okay, we're done. It was interesting, because while it was actually doing the washing, the, the blades slowed down and stopped, and I was like, well, and Sean said, that's not three minutes, or not six minutes. And then uh, they start going the other way. I think that's a great move, being able to swish around the isopropyl alcohol this way, and then swishing it around this way. This is done, so we can remove the top and take a look and see. One of the things to remember, this build plate wasn't securely attached, but it held on just fine. The details on that are pretty sharp. And what's kind of nice, the build plate is nice and cleaned off as well. So one of the things the instruction booklet does say is after isopropyl alcohol, uh, I'm going to try to shake it off just a little bit here, uh, it says to air dry it. One of the things to remember too, because the build plate was submerged in the isopropyl alcohol, uh, when you are drying it off, I don't know if a paper towel is the right way to do it because it's going to leave little furs. Uh, oops. But at the same time, you want to make sure that I, all of it is removed from here because if you try to do a print, uh, that resin ain't gonna stick to it if there's still isopropyl alcohol on there. Mm, 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 mm. Now we can put this on. This has slots that line up with these holes. Okay, we'll replace the lid because UV light is gonna be shining. So it's on the wash. I'm gonna hit this button to change it to cure. Uh, I'll just leave it at six minutes because why not? And then I'm gonna hit start. This is exciting! This is the first print! See you in five and a half minutes. Later. With those beeps, it looks like the curing stage is done. I'm gonna remove the hood. And there it is. That is a cured model. Uh, okay. The model is not tacky. It's not sticky. So the curing process for this worked just fine. This model is easily cured though, because there isn't a lot of resin here and there's plenty of open space for the UV light to get through. Other models might take more six minute turns. It's really up to the model and the geometry and what it looks like. But for this one, it is cured and it looks nearly perfect. I don't know if you can see right there. You can see right there, there's a, uh, a thin, kind of a thin wall, thin line that didn't fill out all the way. I know this is just the demo model and I've got other ones to print. And so what I might do is print this one again. I might, uh, I might also try a different resin. I don't know. I, I'm still somewhat new to resin 3D printing compared to the standard filament based 3D printing. But also it's got some text right there on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, it says 35, I believe that's Millimeters. Millimeter? No, it's micrometers, right? Is it millimeters? Oh, it is millimeters. Well, now that we know this works and this works, we've got some other models to print and I'm excited to show you. Let's print all the things. Day four. There you are, welcome back. We took this home for the weekend by, well, we mean me and in my garage, I completed a number of prints just to get an idea of how this machine would perform and how this machine would perform. And here's what we've got. One of the things I wanted to solve right off the bat was the issue with the test model that we printed. And I think it was that one right there. It's when this one side just didn't cure, just didn't cure. So when I took it home, I did it again. I printed out the test print just to see if something was going wrong. And sure enough, it was. So it wasn't curing right along that side. I was fearing that something was wrong with the machine. 
so what I did is I took off the tank and I looked at the UV light and it was shining great. There were no dark spots anywhere. So then what I did is, well, I did something. I went into Photon Studio, I think is what it's called. It's the software for slicing these models. And in Photon Studio, I brought in this model and I said fit to maximum. And it was like 87.21% scale to fit maximum for this, this build area or build volume. And I thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe this was just just right out, where'd it go? Huh. Just, just on the edge of where that UV light shines, so it wasn't able to cure it. So then what I did is I shrank it down to 85% just to ensure, and I printed it, and it looks like this. And you can tell it completed perfectly, and it looks exactly like what it should look like, and this is a very, very solid print. So I was really, really happy with these results because it meant that this machine was functioning as it should and it was time to print some stuff. So, first what I did is I printed myself, a little myself. <laughs> this is the Mini Joel by Wexter and I printed it really small in this machine just to get an idea of the, the tiny little details that it could try to replicate. There's a giant hole in the top of Mini Joel's head and that was used as a way of draining out any of the resin that collected inside because within Photon Studio, I hope I'm saying the name right, you can hollow models and provide internal supports and drill holes for resin drainage just like I did in the top of Mini Joel's head. And Mini Joel looks great, if I do say so myself. You can see the detail in the mouth, the glasses, the ears, and that crooked little smile that Mini Joel likes to likes to give off. This is a good model. I like this and this, this is awesome. Next what I wanted to try was a model by my buddy Fotis and he created this. This is Lucio from Overwatch or a rendition of Lucio from Overwatch. This model had some problems and I didn't get a chance to retry it. This model had supports which I was able to trim away quite easily but if you see up here in the front it kind of had a, a delamination right here, which raised this up. And normally there's a little space right here, and in the back there are words. This model also had to be shrunken down just a bit in order to fit the build X and Y of this machine. Normally a figure will fit in a machine like this just fine, scaled up, but with this giant round piece at the bottom, it wasn't going to fit that build area of X and Y. So that's why it's this size. Else I would have printed this larger because I really like this character. I don't know why this failed. I was printing in my garage and according to the thermometer, it maintained a temperature between 55 Fahrenheit and 60 Fahrenheit. I believe that's enough for resin printing and I'm not worried. I didn't worry about warming up any of the resin. So if you have any ideas of why something like this would have failed, I'd love to hear about it. But other than that, look at it. Just look at it, it's wonderful. I love that the, the organic shape of the face and the head and the arms is contrasting with the very, very neat digital angular parts of the legs. I love that, this is a good model. I might explore printing this one larger because that would be a lot of fun. Next, I went with Potterman. This is Batman. Hey Batman, I'm Potterman. Potterman, Spider-Man. This is a Spider-Man bust by David er er Erstman. It's, ooh, it's an O with umlauts, and then, uh, but it goes by Eastman on My Mini Factory. And this is a bust by him. Uh, it looks good. Spider-Man, though, um, it came out great, but one of the things I want to address is the holes that you can drill with the slicing software. When I made this model hollow, I said the shell should be three millimeters thick. That's great. Nice three millimeter shell, should be nice and durable. Then I said drill holes and I accidentally drilled the holes two millimeters deep, which meant there was a one millimeter just wall of hardened resin that kept those holes from emptying the resin that was on the inside. And I was like, well, shoot, that's no good. I went through the washing and curing process and I noticed that it started leaking out just a little bit and there was this giant collection of a white powder, kind of, kind of right through here. I've since cleaned it up, but it was a half resin, half isopropyl alcohol solution slowly leaking out, being UV cured by the curing station. I thought that was interesting. Uh, you can tell, but these are the holes right here. When you're uh, doing resin printing, the holes that you put in the model, it's, it's really an art form because you need to reduce the suction force of the FEP sheet and you need to allow resin to be able to drain through the model so it doesn't just collect on the inside 
or you can just print it solid, honestly. <laughs> Usually you don't want to print something solid in resin because of the cost, but the size that this offers means that even solid resin prints, they feel good, nice and weighty, and they're not too expensive just because they're so small. And this Spider-Man came out great. I really like this. The details in the costume and in the surrounding, is that rubble? Some bad guys were defeated and this is Spider-Man's pose kind of kind of like that. Uh, it looks it looks fantastic. And I really like this, but this model kind of showcases some of the limitations of the Photon Zero. With a 480p screen, it means that certain details just aren't going to come through and you're going to have uh, a stair-stepping effect because even though your layers can be really tiny on Z. X and Y is still uh, limited by the size of the screen and of the size of the pixels on the screen. And I don't know if we can see it. What's really great is, in fact, I might be able to. <laughs> I got a little piece of sandpaper here. So it's right there, right? There, you can kind of see it. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. But resin is fantastic when it comes to sanding. And now you can see it's lessened. And if you do a little bit more sanding, more than the five seconds that I spent, that model then becomes clear. And if you're gonna do a lot of sanding, make sure you're wearing a, a respirator just so you don't breathe in the dust. Honestly, at this point, I've shown you a few of the models that we were able to print. Again, I, I took this home for the weekend and this is a weekend's worth of printing and I, I think it did a really good job. We were able to find out that the default print or the example print on the SD card had an issue. And when we brought the STL into their slicing software and re-sliced it, it came out just fine. We got to learn about how the slicing software is able to hollow models and drill holes in the models to be able to drain out the resin. Uh, we learned that uh, there can be issues, but thankfully there are communities around to help you troubleshoot. And there are wonderful designers that make models that are perfect for resin printing. So that leaves me with the ultimate question is, would I recommend something like this? And it's a little different because we have two machines here. I know that one's a resin printer and one is a washing and curing station. First, I wanna get something out of the way. Originally at the top of the episode, I said it was 300 bucks for this as a bundle because I had old information. And unfortunately that's not true. Right now, this machine at any cubic is $169. And right now at any cubic, this machine is $179. Oh, but wait, this is sold out at any cubic as of the time of filming this. Let's say you want this right now. Amazon.com, at least here in the US, has you for $213. And Amazon has this one for $215. Both are available via Prime if you just can't wait. These are really awesome machines. This one is really good. I like this. One of the things that made it cool though is that because it's so small, it's easy to use and prints take no time whatsoever. And because it's using MSLA technology, whether you have a tiny little thing on the build plate or the build plate is full of stuff, it's gonna take the same amount of time to print. It's the Z height that uh, dictates your printing time. This is targeted, I would imagine, towards first time users or first time resin users, or someone who's experienced but just wants something fast, cheap, quick, easy, something that they can get awesome little prints out the door, no problem. If you wanted something to augment your cosplay and you wanted to print little bits that would fit on your outfit, something like this is perfect because you could print out the bits. Give them the bits. You could easily sand them. You could then cast them in another material and have yourself all sorts of adornments on your cosplay outfit. I think that's great. But again, smaller size, you just have to take that into consideration. You know, <laughs> to say I'm excited about this machine right here really doesn't do it justice. And I wanna say that this is a game changer. I think that having something inexpensive that makes the resin printing and finishing process easier is nearly worth its weight in gold. It's no secret that I have a lot of different machines and uh, 
I don't like resin printing. I just don't like it. It's messy, it's frustrating, it takes a lot of time, the resin is expensive, and I just, I just don't like it. This made me like it again. This machine got me excited and interested because I could just take it from here and put it in here and it would be all done. Yes, there are other curing stations and washing stations available and I'm not taking away from their wonder, but at the same time, this is less than $200. And it comes with a sealed container. Normally, what you're gonna do when you want to wash and cure a resin print is you have to dedicate a container to it. And then you have to go find a UV light source. Sure, if you're in Southern California or you're along the Earth's equator, that's not a problem. But here in Seattle, that's a little bit of an issue. And if the sun comes out, it could also be raining at the same time, which will really make you sad when you're trying to cure your resin models. So something like this comes along, makes it epic, and I don't have to worry about storing the, the container of resin somewhere. I don't have to go find some sort of sealed container to hold it, it comes with it. I know I keep talking about this and I don't care because I love this so much. This feels like, like younger Joel wouldn't care about this, but adult Joel really, really gets this. And I really, really enjoy a good sealed container apparently full of isopropyl alcohol. This machine did exactly what it was supposed to do. It's very easy to use. It, it made resin printing exciting for me again. And the best part out of all of this, any cubic didn't make this sized for this. It made it larger. And so any of their other machines that they have should be able to take advantage of this machine. If you have yourself another smaller resin-based 3D printer and you've been looking for a washing and curing solution, I can highly recommend this. And I'm really excited about it if you can't tell. So that's it. Really, I think we have a neat offering from any cubic. It's a little small and it's targeted towards a beginner audience. And it it's fun to use and I think it has use. And it's fun to use it. I think I think I need to make sure I make that clear. This though, this changes the game. It makes resin printing fun for me. And I'm excited that this that something like this exists so that if it will change the game for you, you now have an option. There we go, I think that's it, I think that's it. I think we've got a lot of cool stuff on our hands. Links will be down in the description, and if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, and as always, high five.